Praise the Lord, everybody. Pastor Fields here. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. As I've been saying for years now, I'm glad to be with you on another Wednesday evening. Very happy always for the privilege, wonderful opportunity to come together with the people of God, believing that he would bless us through his holy word. And certainly if we go into his word, his word will get into us. And we need his word today to strengthen, to bless, to deliver, to correct. Whatever is needed in our lives, we can find that need can be supplied or be satisfied through God's holy word. I want to give the saints time to connect on tonight as we prepare uh, to go into tonight's lesson, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we do love you, and we're grateful for this another opportunity to fellowship and to come together in your word, to receive a word from you. Touch everyone under the sound of my voice and those who connect with us on tonight. Give us what we need, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you. Um, tonight I'm in the book of Isaiah. Uh, there was something I wanted to share with you on tonight. You know, this is a time of the year where many are celebrating, but uh, for a lot of people it's a difficult time. Um, and I want to talk about renewed strength. Renewed strength, and I want to encourage someone's heart on tonight to let you know that God can renew our strength. There is renewal waiting for us. Um, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, familiar passage of scripture. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not Faint. Do you remember that scripture? It's one of my favorites. And I want to talk to you tonight about renewed strength. Renewed strength. Somebody put it in the comment section. Um, God will renew my strength. God will renew my strength. Now, in, in in order to realize the significance of uh, the verse that I just read, we need to read the context um, in which the words occur. So let's go up to verse 25 and read through verse 31. And it sounds like this. I'm in Isaiah 40, but I'm going up to the 25th verse. And I'll read through verse 31. To whom then will ye liken me, or shall I be equal? saith the Holy One, lift up your eyes on high, and behold who hath created these things that bringeth out their host by number. He calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one faileth. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. 
so I I want to say here that these verses really are touching the very core of our Christian experience or our walk with God. If if we're honest, if we're honest before God and with ourselves, we would have to admit, Lord, admit rather, Lord, I'm not always what I should be. There are times when I, I feel like I'm failing or like I'm, I can't make it. Have you ever been there? Um, it doesn't mean that you don't love God. It just means because of circumstance, uh, because of trial, uh, because of a certain situation perhaps that you've been in f for a while. Sometimes, we, and you have to admit, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm failing. I don't, I'm, I'm missing it. Uh, and, and sometimes in our walk with God, we come to a place of where we feel weakened. Uh, it's not always a sin issue. It's just um, I just feel weak in my spirit. I don't I don't feel like I'm I'm making the mark. Um, I'm failing, and even in my service and my ability to serve. Have Have you ever been there? Um, so let's talk about some things. The, the first thing, as it relates to what I'm saying, the word of God really convinces us that without God, we're nothing. I'm a failure. Remember that song? Uh, you don't hear it too much anymore. I haven't heard it in a while. Without God, I would be nothing. Without him, I would fail. Without him, I would be drifting like a ship without a sail. Uh, and, and the word convinces us that we need God. We often faint. Uh, and even become weakened. Um, verse 29, let's read verse 29. Um, it says, He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. And sometimes we feel weary as though we're going to fall, as though we're going to just pass out. Have you ever been so spiritually drained or just life is just hitting you in the head and you just feel like, oh, uh, and it has nothing to do with um, how long you've been in church, you know. Some people hide behind that and they don't want people to know that they're, they're having difficulty. Uh, but he says, Isaiah says, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. What I just read in those verses is, is actually God's description of the weakness that is so often uh, characterized in the lives of his children. Listen, if you're if you're in a in in a part of your life where you feel like you're sinking, you better lift your hands and say, "Lord, help me." <laughs> don't don't drown in your situation. Uh, God already understands the reality of and the fact that you can't make it without Him. Somebody help me. I feel like preaching right here. I'm not going to preach, though. Put it in the comment section. I need God's help. I need, If I'm talking to you, put it in the comment section. I need God's help. Another point that I want to make is that observation, uh, not only the word of God, but just through pure observation can convince us that without God we would fail. There's no good thing in our flesh. Our eyes tell us that there's, uh, there's weakness all around us. And let me explain in, in the character of men. If you look at the government and what's going on in government and even in, in the church environment, people don't seem to be as serious about God as they used to. Uh, one thing this pandemic has revealed, it has revealed the true hearts of many. Um, there's, there's so much negligence. There's, there are so many who have turned away 
from the faith or discovered that they really weren't living by faith at all. And you see this, right? And listen, we're living in the last days. Certainly we are. And the Bible says some will depart from the faith. And we are living in that time. Uh, so all you have to do is observe. You don't just have to read the word of God. And God's word is true. But if you just open your eyes and look around you, you'll see that many are just failing and walking by the wayside, giving in to seducing spirits, giving into their own flesh and concepts uh, among God people. Uh, a lot of times those who you thought were strong uh, have only been revealed not to be as strong as they claim to be. And I, I really believe it's because they're trying to do everything in their flesh. And remember, there's no good thing in your flesh. And indeed, the prevailing condition would seem to be one of failure. People are failing because they're trying to do things outside of faith in God. You know, because a lot of what we hear on TV, radio, and a lot of the sermons you hear, it's not a faith message. It's a do-it-yourself kind of message. You can do it. You can do it. Uh, and the Bible does say you can do all things, but it's through Christ that strengthens you. So the word of God convinces us of this observation, convinces us of this, this failure. Also experience tells us that there is much failure without God, without God's strength or without God's help. Our, our own heart, if you search your own heart, you'll see we're weak within ourselves. Self is not strong enough to make the journey. You, you need God. We're faint and weary, and sometimes we're just slow to learn the way of victory and power. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 14 and 10. The heart knoweth his own bitterness, and a stranger doth not intermeddle with his joy. So let's get deeper into this because we're talking about renewed strength and we're dealing with the aspect of all of the weakness and failure that we see around us and it can be discouraging at times. Oh yes, but um, what is the cause of, of our failure or the cause of, of becoming weak at times uh, I'd like to, to say that there is a primary and secondary cause of this. There are two reasons that I want to. First, um, the primary cause is ignorance. Ignorance of the resources that are at our disposal, right? Um, and I'm going to say something. I'm not trying to be offensive, but we we have become so good at shouting and dancing and running and jumping, you know, those those exciting things. We get to service and you feel like, child, if I didn't shout, I didn't have church. And we really have to stop concentrating so much on the shout and the dance and really get to know the things of God that we need. Get some meat between our teeth. Get to a place where our foundation is sure and we learn how to live according to kingdom principles. So the primary cause of, of this weakness or the failure or, is ignorance of the resources that are at our disposal. And yep, I said I use the word ignorance. Um, and I'll give you scripture. I'm going to give you scripture. Hosea chapter 4. The book of Hosea chapter 4, the sixth verse and I know you've heard it before. My people are destroyed for their lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no more priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law 
of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Those are some powerful words God is saying to Israel. People are perishing because of their lack of knowledge. They're not understanding my word, my will. And let's compare that to what is said in the book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 29. This is Jesus talking. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. So even Jesus is saying people are, are weakening and failing because and making all of these errors because they don't know my word. They're not spending time in my word. They're, they're, they're listening for a, get a, a quick fix, a quick fix. They won't receive the correction or even the rebuke. The, all they want is the blessing, the pie in the sky, but you have to eat all of the word. He said, you're erroring. You're going in the wrong direction. You're failing. You're not living according uh, to my will because of your failure to understand the scriptures. You won't even get into the word of God. That he says, and when I say this, I mean Jesus, because he says, ye do err. I'm in Matthew 22, 29. Jesus answered and said to them, ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. Let's go back to Isaiah uh, chapter 40, verse 28. It says, hast thou not known? Don't you know? Haven't you ever heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, faints not, neither is weary? Don't you know by now that there's no tiredness in me? There's no weariness in me. There's no searching of his understanding. Don't you know? Haven't you heard? And, and that's, that's the prophet uh, being unctioned by God to say, don't you know me by now? What are the resources that are at our disposal? Um, hmm. What are the resources that are at our disposal? If I read, I, I read verse 28, but let's go down to verse 29 where it says, he gives power to the faint. He gives power to who? The faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. So let's backtrack a little bit because the Lord is the everlasting God. He is the creator, and our God, our creator, is offering to give us power and strength. God is offering to give us power and strength. Put it in the comment section. God wants to give me power and strength. Mm -hmm. So... Place that against the sad background of us not meeting the market times and our, our failure to operate truly in his word. And this is from the pulpit to the door. And I would confess there are times when I should be walking totally and fully in the calling and in his word. And because of my flesh or because I'm distracted, I fall short. But God promises me. Just like he promises you that I want to give you and I will give you power and strength. So against all of this, there is a promise of, that comes from our everlasting God, the creator of the universe. I just read it to you. Haven't you heard that I am the Lord, thy God, thy creator, and there is no uh, failure in me. There is no tiredness in me. Hallelujah. So what he's offering is, let me turn your failure into a glorious victory or triumph. So through this word, God is actually saying he's, he's, he places all his unlimited resources and strength and power at our disposal. He said, there's no reason for you to fail. There's no reason for you uh, to wander let me give you all of the power and strength 
that you need. It's at your disposal. My goodness. Now, the secret then is, people of God, then that we have to begin to tap into these resources. And, uh, you know, I'm a thinker, so I'm, I'm preparing the lesson and I'm thinking, I'm saying, Lord, we, we've, we've been in church for years and you mean to tell me that uh, we haven't really been tapping into the resources that you have for us? We've, we're in, in many ways, we're just skimming the surface and I hear the Lord say, why don't they use all of the resources that are at their disposal? You're just satisfied with coming to church and going home, talking about I had a good time. Uh, but there's more to me than a song and a shout and a tongue. Tap into the resources. I'm just laying it out where you see the Lord is offering, the creator of the universe is offering somebody like little old me, somebody like you. He's saying, tap into the resources of my power and strength. We have to tap into it. So that's the primary cause. Ignorance of the resources that are at our disposal. My people perish. Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed because of their lack of knowledge. He even went as far as saying you're rejecting this knowledge. You're rejecting it. Could you imagine God is telling you how to do it? Showing you the way, right? Right? You can have this, you can have that, but you have to do this, you have to do that. And they rejected it. They pushed it. And because of this, he said, you won't be a priest. No priest to me, seeing that you have forgotten the law of thy God. You're trying to do it without me. And this is why people are failing and faltering, because they're trying to do it outside of faith, outside of his word. So... That's the primary reason. The second reason is, as I related to a few seconds ago, because we're not tapping into these resources. We're not tapping in to these resources. The 29th verse, Isaiah 40 and, and 29. Let's go back there, Isaiah 40. And the 29th verse says, he gives, he giveth power, he gives he gives, he gives. I serve a God that gives. <clears throat> Excuse me. And in response to his giving, we have to receive. I serve a God that gives. And my response to the fact that he's a giver is I have to receive. So how, this, how does the giving and receiving take place? How does God then transfer this power into my life and he gives the answer in the 31st verse they that wait upon the lord <laughs> that's the answer they that wait they that wait they that wait. So let's talk about it. What does it mean to wait? Does it just mean to sit in the room and twiddle my thumbs? You know, like you're waiting for the doctor appointment. You're just sitting in the car or whatever. Does it mean, uh, and let's, let's dig into it. Does it mean to pray, to worship? Um, does it mean to attend services and read the Bible? Yeah, it does mean that. If I'm waiting on God, it means that... I'm praying, I'm worshiping, I continue to attend services, I continue to read his word, but I want to submit to you and follow me. I won't say that that's the primary concept of waiting. Listen to me. It means... It, it really means to keep silent before God. Remember the scripture, be still and know that I am God. I want to take you to something, I, I, Isaiah 41 and 1. Isaiah 41 and 1. I want you to go there with me before I read it. 
If you have your Bibles, I pray. I'll wait for you. Mm -hmm. And I want you to read it as I'm reading it. Read it with me. I'll wait. Isaiah chapter 41. I hear you, Sister Marbury. Wait, wait. Let me go to it. Isaiah 41 and 1. It says, and read it with me, keep silence before me, O islands, and let the people renew their strength. Let them come near, then let them speak. Let us come near together to judgment. Waiting on God means be silent. Be silent so you could hear his voice. Be silent. Mm -hmm. There has to be a, a moment of silence where you're you're meditating and you're yes, you've been seeking God, but you're keeping silent. He says, keep silent before me, O islands, and let the people renew their strength. Let's compare that to, to uh, Psalm 62 and 1. <laughs> yes, this is a Psalm of David. Psalm 62 and 1. I'm going to wait on you again. The 62nd Psalm. Verse number one, read it with me, won't you? If you're ready, come on, let's read. Truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. So where the word waiteth or wait is the word waiteth literally means be silent stop complaining so much stop fussing so much stop worrying so much some of you you worry in internally and it comes out of your mouth over and over again i don't know i don't know how is this da 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 and you're you're in panic mode instead of praise mode if you would just be silent before the lord so the word waiteth literally means be silent let's go to proverbs chapter 8 Mm -hmm. I'm going to wait on you again because I want you to get it. Proverbs chapter 8, verse number 34. You ready? Okay. Proverbs eight thirty four says, Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. So waiting upon God means to be cast upon him in utter dependence. I'm, I'm utterly depending upon God and I'm ready to hear his voice. I'm, I'm into, sometimes, sometimes in prayer, I've discovered some of my greatest moments in prayer is when I shut my mouth so I could hear the voice of God. I could feel his, him ministering to me. So waiting upon God means uh, to be cast upon him. I'm, I'm laying on him like someone is, I'm, I'm, I'm just laid out on his word, laid out on him in utter dependence. Lord, if you don't do it, it won't get done. And I'm, I'm not going anywhere and I'm ready to hear his voice so I could do his will ready to hear his voice. Put it in the comment section. Ready to hear God's voice so I can do his will. So my entire expectation, my entire expectation, my whole expectation is from him. So we're waiting to hear his voice, having our whole expectation from him. And so it it is implying complete and total confidence and trust in God. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So I'm absolutely, positively having complete and total trust in God, having no confidence in myself or in human help the arms of flesh will fail and certainly there are people around that want to help but they can't help you like god can hallelujah thank you jesus so 
Let's talk about it a little bit more. I'm not going to keep you long. I just wanted to talk about tonight renewed strength. What is then, what is the result of waiting on the Lord? What is the result? Because you, I, we talked about the primary and secondary reasons for failure and weakness. And uh, we talked about all of this and uh, we talked about uh, how we're convinced concerning certain flaws and uh, uncertainties, right? We see it through the word of God, observing and through it, even personal experience. And we've talked about, again, uh, the two reasons why um, we're not able to really get what we need. It's because of the ignorance that many times we have of the resources that are at our disposal or simply our failure to tap into those resources because there are people who know the word. They can quote scripture, but their, their difficulty comes in application and being able to tap into those uh, resources. And I told you the secret then to that uh, is waiting on God. And we've talked about what it really means to wait on God. So here we are getting ready to close out, but talk about the results of waiting, the results of waiting. And um, I want to say perhaps there's a fourfold result that comes when you are waiting on God anticipating his move, depending totally on him. Um, you'll have God's strength. Here's the first one. You'll have God's strength replacing your weakness. Mm -hmm. So put that as number one. Somebody in the comments section, the first result of waiting on God, number one, and make it personal. I will have God's strength in place of my weakness, instead of operating out of my flesh or out of my failure, um, I'm, I will be operating in God's strength. I can do all things through Christ that, through Christ that strengthens, through Christ that strengthens. So listen, let's dig deep into this. The word renew, the word renew, can literally be translated as change or exchange. <laughs> Let me exchange your weakness for my strength. Give me your garment of mourning and I'll give you a garment of praise. So the word renew can be translated literally as to change or exchange. So our greatest weakness, our greatest weakness, listen, is our own strength. Did you catch that? My greatest weakness is my own strength, operating in me, operating in myself. That's that then can be my greatest is my greatest weakness. So if I learn to go to God in my utter weakness, come to God, bring myself to him. He will exchange me for him. He'll show me how to walk, how to talk, how to move. He'll bring me to a place of victory. Mm. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. This is Jesus talking back to, to Paul, you know. Lord, I've come three times to you about this thorn in my flesh. Mm -hmm. And this is what Jesus says. My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, Paul is saying, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I can't learn about his power if I continue to operate in myself. And I think that's the problem so many times. There's too much self, too much flesh, too much me, 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 me. 
So what kind of strength are we talking about? He shall renew. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew, shall change, shall exchange. Hallelujah. Mm. What kind of strength? Um, physical strength? Yep. He can renew your, your physical strength. Um, he can and does renew our physical strength when we wait on him. Right? Romans 8 and 11. But of the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Does he give us mental strength? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He is the fountain of all wisdom. <laughs> and he quickens our minds also as we wait on. He doesn't just strengthen us physically, but he will bless your mind, your very mind. He'll bless you mentally. Some of us are tired mentally. All the stuff we've been going through, yeah. Some of us are tired mentally. We, we need God to, Lord, touch my mind. Romans 12 and 2. What does Romans 12 and 2 say? Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I got more scripture. Ephesians 4 and 23. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Ephesians 4 and 23. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. Listen. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. I didn't give you fear. This is what I gave you. Power, love, a sound mind. So this strength, this renewal of strength, will he renew you physically? Yes. Mental? Yes. Um, mm-hmm. Will he strengthen me morally? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Ephesians 6 and 10. Finally, brethren, be ye strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. 2 Timothy 2 and 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So mentally, physically, he strengthens and morally he strengthens. So spiritually, he strengthens, he renews. Luke 24 and 29, but they constrained him saying, abide with us for it is toward evening and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. Spiritual strength. Acts 1 and 8, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Hmm. 1 Corinthians 1 and 25, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. <laughs> I wish I had time to get into that particular scripture. A lot of things God does seems foolish to man. We don't understand his ways. God confines the very smartest of us. And what might appear to be a weakness is stronger than man. And there's really no true weakness in him. But even if there was any weakness, it would still be stronger than anything men can do. Isaiah 30 and 15. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved in quietness. And in confidence shall be your strength. Mm -hmm. And ye would not. God said, I have all of this strength, all of this ability, 
all of this at your disposal and you will not tap into the resources that are being made available to you to live. Mm -hmm. So, the first one, the first result of waiting on God is that we can have his strength in place of our weakness. Number two, the second result of waiting on God is uh, we can enjoy life above the average. We can enjoy life. Put that in the comment section. Number two, I can enjoy life above the average. Yeah. He says it in the scripture. I'll, if you wait on me, I'll renew your strength and I'll let you soar on wings like eagles. <laughs> yeah. You know anything about eagles? They, they're able to fly above the earth's sorted level, above the smog, above the clouds. It might be raining beneath the clouds, but the, the eagle can soar above all of that. To where the things of earth grow strangely dim. Hallelujah. Listen to my notes. You can fly above the things of the earth. Those things that are dimly lit. Right into the glory of his grace. That sounds poetic, doesn't it? Let's talk about the eagle. Because the eagle is the only bird that flies so high until you can't see him, but he can see you. Mm -hmm. My God. I want to encourage somebody and say, that's, that's where we belong. We, we belong. We belong up there. Mm -hmm. Isn't there a promise somewhere where he said, I'll let you ride in the high places of the earth? And I'll feed you with the heritage of Jacob. That's eagle talk. But that's a promise that God made to the people, his, his children. My God, we belong to heaven now. We are citizens of heaven. We belong to heaven. And he has put us in heavenly places. And we need to begin to live like we're living in heavenly places. Philippians 3 and 20, for our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Our conversation, our behavior, our conduct, we ought to live and talk and behave like we are heavenly people. Hallelujah. God raised up Christ is another um, phrase or another part of God's word where I, I read early and let's go to Ephesians 2 and 6 and hath raised us up together right just like that power raised up Jesus Christ that same power abides in us and Paul alludes to it in chapter 6 chapter 2 rather of Ephesians and said and he's also raised us up together and made us sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So let's go to another scripture. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. So, because I just told you, we've also been risen, put in heavenly places in Christ Jesus so Paul says now in chapter 3 of Colossians, So if ye then are risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. And set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Perhaps we're looking too low. We're not looking up. We're not searching for heavenly things. All we see is the negative, but there's a whole lot of stuff up there God has for us. And I'm not talking now about dying and going to heaven. I'm talking about living according to kingdom principles and according to his word. And in a place where our strength is renewed. 
the Bible even says, though the outer man perish, the inner man is renewed, renewed day by day. So many believers, many believers are earthbound. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever seen a bird that broke his wing? He's not able to fly or he's, he's broken a, a leg. I've, I've seen uh, birds, you know, who would normally be flying because they hurt their wing. They're, they're just hopping. Um, we're just hopping. And uh, sometimes the saints hop instead of soaring. We're hopping around because like we've got a broken wing or broken leg. Um, instead of flying like an eagle. <laughs> you and I, as, as children of God, have been made to fly. I've come that you may have life, that you may have it more abundantly because of the Holy Ghost and because of what God has invested in us. We have the ability to live above any situation. And I'm not talking about getting rich quick prosperity. I'm talking about living in the fullness of his joy. Does it mean that we're not going to have sorrowful moments? Nope, doesn't mean that. But it does mean that I can still live. Hallelujah. I can still have joy. I can still enjoy my salvation. I can live above the situation. We've been made to fly, not to hop around. Not to behave as though we have no victory. Not to conduct ourselves like there's no way out of our situations. We have and we serve a mighty God. So we'll enjoy life above the average. Hmm, there's no humdrum in our salvation. Everything God does for us and through us is intentional. Hallelujah. The third one is we'll do supernatural things. The first one was we'll have God's strength in place of our weakness. The second one is we will enjoy life above average. Now I'm at number three. We will do supernatural things. Remember in that portion of scripture, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will run and not grow weary. It's not a natural thing for us to run, for a person to run. It's not a natural thing. Let me say it again. It's not a natural thing for a person to run and never feel weary. You ever go out and run? I'm so out of shape now. If I ran for one minute, I feel like I'm going to fall. And there are people who are in perfect shape. They might run long, but eventually they become weary. But God, in this verse, if you wait on him, and we talked about what it means to wait, he promises supernatural power for the accomplishing of supernatural tasks, supernatural power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Somebody put it in the comment section. Supernatural power. I'll let you run and not grow weary. I promise you that if you wait on me, we are supernatural people. Yes, we are. Because we are linked to a supernatural God. Who is mightier? He said, and we read it earlier, who is mightier than I? I never get tired. And if you tap into my strength, I'll let you run and not grow weary. Hallelujah. Let's go to John, St. John chapter 7, verse 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture says, out of his belly shall flow waters of living water. He that believeth on me, I'm going to read it again. This is Jesus talking. As the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Mm -hmm. 
John 14 and 12, and I'm coming back. I need to say some more about the rivers of living water. But John 14 and 12, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. So let's work this a little bit on the streams flowing through us and the greater things being accomplished through us? That's the question I want you to ponder. And you can even make it personal. Are these streams flowing through me? Are these greater things or greater works being accomplished through me? So here's what I have in my notes. Let's elaborate a little further because rivers of living water refer to that his spirit, that Holy Spirit, his Holy Spirit that abides on the inside. Everyone who was born again, spirit filled, he's teaching that you will have or experience his overflowing life, 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 life. The living water will flow from deep within you. Life will flow from deep within you. Hallelujah. So much so until others will feel life. Others will be down around you, weak around you, and just, just your presence, just because you're allowing God to live through you, they'll feel that strength, that power. Hallelujah. John 10 and 10, you know the word, the thief comes, not but for to steal. This is Jesus talking and to kill and to destroy. But I come, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. This is Jesus teaching. Mm -hmm. John 14 and 12, verily, verily I say unto you, he that believeth on me the works that I do, we read it before, I'll read it again. Shall he do also in greater works than those shall he do? Then these rather shall he do because I go unto my father. The 15th chapter of John, chapter five, John 15 and five. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth much fruit. Listen to what Jesus closes out the verse with. He says, for without me, ye can do nothing. Hallelujah. Without me, you can't do a thing. That's Jesus talking. In the book of Psalms, the first, the very first Psalm, verse number three, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, hallelujah, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. I love the word of God. I love the word of God. The 46th Psalm, verse number four, and I'm getting ready to close. I'm coming to the fourth point, but the, he says there is a river the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. Isaiah 32 and 15, until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high and the wilderness be a fruitful field and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. My God, overflowing life. I'll let you have so much life until you walk in dead places and because of the life that's flowing out of you. Hallelujah. I'll bring forth streams in desert places. Hallelujah. There are many more scriptures that I could use, but I'm going to stop there. And I'm going to go straight to the fourth point. And we talked about the results of waiting on God. The first one is that you'll have God's strength in place of yours. You'll enjoy life above average. That's number two. Number three, you'll be able to do supernatural things. Hallelujah. But the fourth one, fourth one, 
I want to say it like this. You'll be able to live victoriously in the hardest place. You might be in the hard place, but because you are waiting on God, anticipating, you're still able to live victoriously. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? But it's a reality. For those of us who are walking by faith and not by sight, you're still doing it. You're still living. You're still paying these bills, right? You're not out in the streets. You're still living victoriously. And people are looking at you wondering how in the world is she making it in the, underneath all this pressure. You're living victoriously even in a hard place. God wants to bring us to a place where we are victorious in our daily routine of life. It's just, just victory everywhere. Victory coming out your ears. Victory, victory, victory. Living above it because now you're not hopping around. You're learning how to fly. Hallelujah. Run and not be weary. And we will walk. That's everyday life. My everyday life. My every I'll be victorious while I'm walking this walk. Walk and not faint. Hallelujah. Listen, he didn't say run and not faint. He said walk. Run, not be weary. Supernatural. And I'll give you victory day by day as you walk walk and not faint sometimes it's easier to to run than to walk right and running gets you there quick so so we think but the the most the most testing place for each of us is that place where we engage in our everyday way of life and things become difficult. Situations arise. And this is where we need God's strength. And you understand that it's not a sprint. Hallelujah. It's, it's a day-by-day -day walk. It's a, it's a marathon even. Right? And um, I want to read a scripture out. I, I want to say... Um, in the book of Psalms. And I'm going to close here. Familiar passage. Psalm 37. 23. The steps. Of a good man. Are ordered by. The Lord. And he. Delighteth. In his way. My God. And even if he falls. He shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. God's hands are strong. And when you get to a place where you can make it, he'll come and he'll lift you up. Now unto him who was able to keep you from falling. He's keeping us. We're not keeping ourselves. And God can and, and will allow you to live victorious even in the hardest place of your life, in the most difficult season of your life because you're waiting on him, trusting totally on him. You can have victory even in that place. I want to pray. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. Renewed strength. Hallelujah. Help us, Father. We need you. This is a difficult season for many, and some are in, right in the middle of a situation. And I pray, oh God, for renewed strength for their heart, for their mind, for their spirit. All that they need, Father. Give them the courage to wait, truly wait and trust knowing that you will fulfill your word in their lives. You will renew their strength. And we thank you, Father. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 
I want to have a special prayer line. Those of you who are in need of a special blessing, put your name quickly in that comment section so we could establish an electronic prayer line. Put your family's name, whatever you need. Put the name there. I'm getting ready to pray again. I want God to do something special. I want God to heal, deliver, to set free. I want him to renew, to restore, to replenish. I want revival to break out in your house, among your children, those who have backslid in your family. Hallelujah. I want them to call you and say, God just touched me again. That's what I'm praying for. Put your name there. Don't be afraid. Let's do it. Let's do it quickly because God is about to do something on your behalf. He's going to renew your strength. He's going to stir up revival. Yes, he's going to touch and bless and heal. Father, as they're putting their names there, oh God, one by one, home by home, situation by situation, we're putting it all in your hands and we say thank you for the miracles Hallelujah. Thank you for the healing and deliverance. Thank you for bringing salvation to the doorstep. Thank you, oh God, for turning it around. We receive it and we say thank you. Come on, just say, Lord, I thank you. And right where you are, put your hands together and give the Lord some praise. My, my, my. God bless you. If you want to plant a seed in this ministry, Want to pay your tithes, give an offering, you may do so. The technician will put that on the screen. Follow those instructions, won't you? And those of you who are at the annex there in the Bronx, you may use Givelify. Yes, and those of you at Jeremiah Temple who are watching, who are watching and, and participating in this Bible lesson, write that check out to Jeremiah Temple. I'll hold that offering uh, for Jeremiah Temple. And when you get to the temple on Sunday, make sure you record it and say, this is my Bible study offering. Turn it in there. Let's be a blessing to the house of God and to the ministry. Father, those who are planting seed, I pray that you bless them. Open up the windows of heaven and pour them out a blessing so much until they're not able to receive it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. And I pray that you have a wonderful Christmas. Christmas falls on Sunday this year. This coming Sunday will be Christmas morning. Listen, don't stay home. I had so many people asking, are you still having church uh, on Christmas Day? And I'm 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 was a little puzzled because Christmas is all about Jesus. It's not about Santa Claus and staying home. It's it's about celebrating Jesus. And and the shame comes when we people wait once a year uh, to talk about it. The fact that it's all about Jesus, but um, understand that that church and the worship is where we need to be. We need to be celebrating not only the fact that he came and he was born, but the fact that he died and rose again. And because he lives, we can live also. Enjoy your worship experience. Greater Refuge Temple here in Washington, D.C. Refuge Temple Annex there in the Bronx. Jeremiah Temple there in Baltimore. Enjoy the Lord. Enjoy your Christmas with your families. The Lord bless you. And the Lord keep you. And until then, until next week when we come back together, I want you to be careful, be prayerful, be holy. Shalom. shalom.